by my interrupt. Uh, I will invite you, if you be so kind, to make your comments brief and your questions just as brief. And if you have a question to pose to any member of the panel, then you can identify the person to whom you want to pose a question. Actually, I have three 
questions that I want to pose to the panel. I think the first one would be um, going to either disaster mercy management or between the disaster mercy management and the Royal Office Police Force. Are you all are back in um, 2007 that we had the earthquake. Um, I mean, it was, I think it was a 3.7 or something like that, which is scale. It was a two, was it? Four? And it was a two major, and we in Barbados and through the region have been taught how to deal with um, storms and hurricanes and fires and stuff like that. Um, but if it was a more, let's say, higher on the Richard scale, like in terms of seven or eight or something like that, and we had a threat of a tsunami. Um, I just, this is a question I think to the disaster emergency management. Um, are we ever going to put in place um, a road in Bridgetown, an exit road in Bridgetown to Harris Road, that we'll be able to, because I strongly believe that you can't drive out if you have a tsunami warning, everybody trying to drive through Bridgetown at one point, it probably can't happen. Um, to be able to be on foot, having signs posted from Bridgetown leading to her ground so that everybody can assemble or just head for her ground. Would that be something to be put in place in the near future? Uh, I have two other questions, but you can answer that if you want. So first, and then we'll go on. Okay, and thank you. So your question is just a very good question. Is, uh, when do we have evacuation roads in place for tsunami evacuation? Yeah, well, tsunami evacuation. Tsunami is an area that we have been looking at quite closely in the past. I think Dr. Brewster and the Postal Zone Unit are very much technically used when it comes to that. Uh, we have a, a, one of the standing committees within the National Emergency Management System is the technical committee for uh, postal hazards. And that kind of has been looking quite a lot at tsunami readiness. So just not just the public awareness side, but also the, um, the uh, is looking at evacuation issues and so on. Um, it has focused a lot of its type of work on the area of Cold Town. Uh, but of course, we can really go evacuation. Bridge down, bridge down. Um, now, in terms of the evacuation, the actual of the evacuation and so on, that is a matter that is handled by police primarily. And I think it's the superintendent had, been, had mentioned it earlier, some work that had been done previously to test the evacuation plan for the Bridgetown area. Um, so I would prefer to ask uh, police, police, or, or this police force to speak to the actual evacuation of Bridgetown areas. But yes, we have looked at it um, in, in certain specific areas. Uh, and work has been done to uh, try to get a, a, a sense of what the inundation would be like um, in various areas of course, like and Barbados if uh, we were to be affected by tsunami. How does that? In the respect of tsunamis, we are not the expert. What we practice, what we know that is expected, is that if there's a tsunami, you run. I am wrong. Get to higher ground. You know what I mean? A tsunami is not a hurricane that an office can feed us the information. We know the timelines that we have to work in. Coastal Zone is working on information on how to monitor those things. And hopefully, we get to a level that we will get some information, but the movement of that will be. It's not, it's very quick, and all we try to practice with that and encourage people to do, and the efforts one, then we try to get the higher growth. I don't know if Dr. Brewster wants to go a bit further on it. Mr. Clark wants to say something as well. It's really for, for Dr. Brewster, but the, the, the interjection is this. The Bridgetown Emergency Traffic Management Plan, as it's called back then, we know that we practice it. We did it once, have a certain goal that we can do it again. And I think the question was whether or not we would be enrolled in any book direction and stuff, as is done in other jurisdictions. Now, some things would have changed since that time, and I think it needs to be revisited. But the point I, I want to raise here it is not the only place to come, because we need a more extensive track management plan also, and especially all time. Right, so there are different plans that needs, needs to be done. And yes, we feel guilty that we have concentrated so far on the bridge down. And let me rephrase that. That we've practiced the bridge down emergency traffic management plan. And we're hoping that at some
sometimes soon that we can do it again. But it will be uh, some groups may very well change. But as far as the tsunami, I think that is up to you. The Met Office is supposed to be the tsunami warning focus on for tsunamis. Now, we do not have any monitoring equipment to deal with tsunamis. However, we do have access to a site where this week can tell us about and our web curves where the curves and so on. So, based on that, then we might get the information then from the Pacific Warning Center. This is all the way from Right? So, we can appreciate the time that it takes for all that information to travel across the network and then for us to decide what's going on and then put the warning up there. Right? So, all those things have to be taken into consideration. We also have to look at where um, possibly the earthquake occurred, how far from our river, and how if a tsunami is generated, how long the travel time it takes to get from there. So you may not have time, obviously, to get that warning, right? But the whole idea is that you um, evacuate very quickly wherever possible, because you cannot overwork the runs and then it occurs, you know, within some distance close to one. So you have to keep those things in mind when you're talking about tsunamis and evacuation and so on. I, I see two other hands in addition to yours, and I think it is only fair that we entertain such. But may I remind you, keep your questions brief. All right? I also want to, at this point, uh, let it be known that while I'm enjoying the, 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 the role of moderator, I have to abort my role. I did not realize when I gave consent to do this, that I have given consent to another event and that is the war assembly which I, has to, which I have to host and that begins at 7 and they told me if I get there at 7 or 15 that is good and I still have to go home and change and put on my good clothes <laughs> and head there so I'm going to invite the chair if you'd be so kind to, to, to fill the spot but I want to take the opportunity to thank you very much for your kind invitation and you, the members of the parish committee, you know that you can call on me at any time. Even though I think today my wife quarrel with me because she thinks that I am overdoing it. <laughs> thank you. Oh dear. <laughs> so, for the purpose of order, you will pose your questions and then we had a question from the parish ambassador and then the community dependence representative. All right, final, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, I'll try to be as brief as possible to ask some questions. Um, I just want to say kudos to my, to my chairman, Mr. Richard Burke. Uh, he spoke about um, the DO being a very technologically savvy DO. He um, spoke about Google Earth and being able to recognize where we have vulnerable people to go for um, our video location. Um, one of the things that uh, came into my mind that I would like to see implemented uh, down the road, um, as we know in St. James, especially St. James is a platform here, a lot of different places in St. James. We can't really travel when we get a lot of rain and we fall. Um, I just want to know if it's, if it's possible to put something like an action place whereby where you have a notice coming up from the Met Office saying that we have a flood watch or flood warning that just like how we can find locations on our phones drive from one place to the other, we can see the route and we will be able to identify where the flood front areas are so that even if you have a GPS that you can get it on your, your car and be able to look on, on the display and see well like you can't take that road because this road in particular floods, we got the US here that are familiar with all the flood front areas in St. James some St. Michael, some St. Joseph. So once that information is pulled together and put in an app system, can that system be implemented in a phone, in some form of a um, computer within your car so that people will know, because we've got tourists coming here and they just take the map and drink all around Barbados. And if you can see those areas highlighted maybe in blue or something like that, they will know once there's a flood warning to watch the can traverse those areas because it, it may be dangerous. Uh, my last question is to Pastor Zomba. You can answer that question first. I think I'm going to make.
police and uh, maybe disaster. Right, so I will attempt to answer. You are, you asked a very good question and it's something that we have to be working on. It's, it's just for our club and this is the EM who have launched the common, common alerting protocol. This is an app that you can actually download on your phone. Right? So you just go and download the app and you will get the messages as they come out from the Met Office and from the EM and so on. In terms of the color coding, I think this is something we are actually involved in a project right now. This is the Met Office along with the EM and um, Coastal Zone and so on. Where we are working on something called impact based forecasting. Where you are looking, you are going to be looking at color coding, different alert levels, right? And we are also working on the hazard maps that go along with those so that what the same question you are asking, you will be able to in a position to put out that kind of um, information to the public. Last one quick, last question. Um, this goes to Coastal. Um, this is hopefully something down the road. I, I know recently we had uh, some protest action and stuff like that. Um, the beach in Paul Town. We had some people coming out complaining about great water and stuff like that. I know when you first spoke, you spoke about um, making sure that the, the sea doesn't basically get away the beach and uh, cause erosion to trees and stuff like that. You guys have a plan of like, maybe, like replacing certain trees, maybe like casuarina and uh, mahogany and um, the mash new trees that would have been damaged over the years with, uh, with some surge and stuff like that. Um, and the other thing is that. Um, the next question is, how do you see sports tourism? Because I, I think mainly the protest was because uh, we had some people that were very, very interested in surfing and sit tourists come here. It's a particular spot on the West Coast and it's being damaged by Great Water Bay and the main cave by, 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 by um, people that want to construct the building. And all that. So how do you see sports tourism and, and being able to uh, keep that as a main focus for our people? Okay. Uh, on, on, on the first one regarding the vegetation, yeah, we always encourage the planting of vegetation on beaches, right? Uh, the only problem that we have is that we can't go on plant on, on plant in front of people's property, okay? Unfortunately. So we've had situations where we've tried to plant things like sea grape and um, some fat pork, has been on those sort of things in some locations, and the property owners removed it. So what we normally try to do through the National Conservation Commission is to encourage uh, the public to plant trees that are going to help hold the beach, not, not hold the trees, but hold the trees that are not hold the beach, right? Or plant the seaside yam, the pine that bears the purple flower, um, to help hold the sand because those runners and, and those sort of uh, plants are effective in holding the beach sand when you get strong waves, right? Uh, you only see it actually when the beach gets eroded and how much sand those vines hold, right? The problem that you have is that some people think that they're unsightly, that because of the way how the general public uses the beach, there's a lot of garbage often left in them or blown up in them, and therefore they're very difficult to clean. So you would see like, whereas down Brandon's one time used to have a lot of the same vine all across the back by the Casarina trees, over the last four years, NCC has systematically removed that to get the impression that the beach is a lot wider than it really is, right? So my greatest fear is that when we get a significant storm impact coming in down there, that the corner from the flower mill and the back is going to grow really bad. Okay? Um, but they should know better because under the legislation of the Coastal Zone Management Unit, removal of vegetation is illegal once it's been established, right? So we try to encourage people to plant, when we have new developments going in, we try to encourage the developers to also plant all vegetation. The issue with Casarina is that um, while Casarina is good at holding sand, it also is bad at preventing other things from growing under it, and therefore it poses a major problem in some areas. So if you have Casarinas acting as human shade trees on beaches, and then you have the ornamentals behind, like the cotons and those other sort of plants around, once the pine needles start to get into the garden beds, it systematically kills those plants, right? Um, and that poses a problem. Uh, but normally, once you keep them trimmed well, and the root systems are well, they can work, right? But the 
been trying to reduce the use of casuretin. Therefore, we recommend more to see grape, where you can apply it as a veg vegetative hedge or clusters, and also things like fat or um, or we try to retain manchineal on beaches. We don't plant manchineal, but we try to retain manchineal because they are the tree best trees for beaches and new the soil. Sports tourism and your role as sports on Sports tourism, sports tourism is good for Barbados, I have no doubt. Uh, we, are, we are very much in favor of it. The issue that you found with that one location was, was that that site is seasonal, it isn't all year round. So when you're getting these swells coming in on the west coast, that's, that's what is ideal for the surfing that goes on, right, on the west coast. Surfing doesn't always take place every day of the year down on the west coast. You're going to have to either go north or they go down in the area of um, Drill Hall, or if not, they go around to the southeast coast in H. Marlow to start to run, right? Uh, you don't find much of this been surfing on the west coast because wind surfing is, is traditionally a high wind area, so you have to be on, on the south coast down there by Silver Sands, H. Marlow again, or heading off into the Long Beach area. Um, and the other water sports. I'm, I'm now seeing things like jet blading has come to Barbados, right, in Carla Bay, which was something that we were pretty much unaware of, but we're now trying to regularize that because as an attraction it looks really exciting, but it can also be dangerous not only for the person that is riding the blade, but also for the persons in and around the area where they're operating because they're not operating offshore in the water anymore, right? Anybody knows what jet blading is? That's the one where you you see it in some ads where you strap on something like a board or a sheet, and then you get this jet propulsion of water and get up and walk. It's almost like walking in the air, sort of thing, um, and you're riding around, right? Um, there's one operation that I know about in that, and they're operating in Carlisle Bay. I don't know how they got permission, but uh, probably through the port and those sort of things, because it is a sport, but it hasn't really and truly been regularized as an activity, like how you have jet skis and um, things like banana boat rides and those other sort of things. Um, and then even, you know, water sport tourism is something that is always not